Almost everyone that's watched football will have noticed the gambling advertisement because it's something that's so normal now and commonly associated with football. Football gambling starts off as a bit of fun for so many people like myself, but can quickly control your life and become something that you're consistently reminded of through endless advertisement. When you bet fair on football, you get daily rewards because sometimes you just gotta take the money and run. Sign up today with Betway and Win365, the world's favourite online sports betting company. This is Betty. Before the 2005 Gambling Act, there were so many iconic sponsors. Arsenal, JVC, Man United, Sharp, Liverpool, Candy, Leicester, Walkers. And now modern kits are plastered with gambling sponsors, which look horrible. Right, I know I'm a broken record at this point, but what do you see first when you look at this football shirt? If your eyes are drawn to it first, that's the eyes and eyes of like an eight year old when they see their favorite player wearing it, or they see their parents wearing it. A young child's eyes are drawn to that sponsor. And in my opinion, it just ingrains it in a young age. Like, the gambling's far too accepted in football, and I'm never gonna change my stance on it. The sponsor kills that shirt. It's a nice shirt, but it's just, it's killed. That is far too big, and it's the main aspect of that shirt. And that shouldn't be what football shirts are. That shouldn't be what they represent. And this is such a big example of why I hate them. The only gambling advertisements that were shown on TV were national lottery, football pools, and bingo. In the five years after the 2005 Gambling Act came into law, gambling adverts rose by 600%, and in 2016, 42% of adults had gambled in the last year. Football is the nation's favorite sport, and gambling companies use that to get you interested in betting. Current Tranmere Rovers chairman, Mark Palios, has made it very clear that he rejects the gambling industry. So what role has football played in gambling's rapid growth over the last 10 or 15 years? Well, I'm pretty certain it's been a very large component in the growth of gambling. Put it this way, these people are very good marketeers. They understand that football is a platform for them. Partly it gives them tremendous exposure because of the extent to which football pervades uh, everyday life in this country. Fun and persistent adverts create the illusion that gambling is a social activity, but really it's so lonely for addicts. It's on shirts, it's on electric billboards around the ground, it's sometimes even the name of the ground, it's on social media posts, and it's on adverts both online and on TV. But we were one of the six playoff teams a few years ago, and we were the only one that didn't have a, 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 a gambling sponsor on our shirts. And we have a, you know, a good local business that actually provides us with a very, very good and very competitive price for being in our shirts. So you may have to work a bit harder. You may have to look elsewhere. You may get slightly less. But it certainly isn't Armageddon if you took it all away. Betting has been a part of football culture for years. Sweet Caroline, a song that was adopted at the Euros, is used by William Hill to bring back those good memories and try and link that to betting. Football is a hook to get you into gambling and then push you onto casino, which is open 24 seven, and that's where they really want you to be. For too many people, the normalization of gambling in football creates huge problems. Especially in the digital age now, when it becomes part of the, 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 the game experience, and we talk about the match day experience, it becomes part of the match day experience for people. But what we can't control now is the fact that everybody you know, picks up their mobile phone, which is a portable terminal. Now, when you tie that into the number of incidents that happen in a game which are myriad and everybody's there and becomes part of the entertainment itself you know, that's a really sort of insidious way of selling your product we love the feeling of seeing our team win and this feeling can be transferred to gambling the football ends after 90 minutes but gambling can go on for a lot longer they prey on those that are the most vulnerable with 60 percent of their profits coming from five percent of their customers they're not your mate they're trying to exploit you
and that's how they make their money. In about 2018, there was a, there was a survey which showed that um, the majority of gambling profits came from the poorer end of the world itself and from the poorer communities. And if you go down to our shopping centre, there are all the hell of a lot of charity shops and betting shops. And so that's the type of demographic that I think automatically gives them an opportunity to um, to increase their, their market penetration. Suddenly I'm biting my nails at second division Colombian, Icelandic, Japanese football through the night and well into the early hours of the day. Football without betting just isn't enjoyable anymore as the desire for a bet to win is far greater than my own team winning. They prey on that pure love for football and once you're addicted, it taints that love for the beautiful game. For young people like myself, you're introduced to gambling at such a young age, whether you realise it or not. When I turned 18, the first thing I wanted to do was create a gambling account as it was just such a new and exciting experience. Suddenly I was addicted and instead of enhancing the experience, it was causing anxiety and very very quickly burned a hole in my pocket. James Grimes is a part of The Big Step, which is a campaign to kick all gambling advertisement out of football. So our campaign is focusing on ending all gambling advertising and sponsorship in football, which the, probably the most obvious example of that is shirts. So in the Premier League currently, I think 10 Premier League clubs have a gambling company somewhere on their shirt. In the Championship, it's a handful more as well. So you can just see how influential gambling sponsorship is in football. And it is, it is causing harm. And that's why we're, we're campaigning to prevent the harm, but also Gambling sponsorship on shirts means that young people can't wear the same shirt as their heroes and their parents. So if we got rid of it, that would be a freedom given back to kids that has been stripped from them. So the, the big step came from my experiences of gambling addiction. I had a 12-year addiction which took me to the brink and it was, uh, it was not nice. It destroyed relationships. I lost £100,000, I think, still in debt to most of those loans now. Um, but it really had an impact on my mental health. It, it, it destroyed who I was. I didn't know what I'd become. I didn't understand what had happened to me. And the very starting point of this 12 year addiction, which took me to that horrible place, was a football bet. And I grew up in an era where all of a sudden, every time you watch football, you would have Ray Winston telling you to bet in play now. You'd see adverts that said, it matters more when there's money on it. You'd have your favorite players with gambling companies on their shirt. All of this, from a young age, just completely normalized gambling. When I was 16, 17, 18 years old, football let me down. Football failed me because it sold me this thing that destroyed my life. Into recovery, I finally stopped gambling nearly four years ago now, and I realized I couldn't watch a match without wanting to put a bet on it. And every time I watched it, I was being triggered by the amount of advertising that was in the game. I wanted to do something about it selfishly for me because I didn't want to I didn't want to watch football and have to put up with this. So I had the idea of walking to football clubs that have gambling based shirt sponsorships. That turned out to what is now the big step, hence the name. We walked to the clubs with the shirt sponsors and did it voluntarily for 18 months, two years, and I'm now paid by Gambling With Lives to run this campaign full time and more and more people are being harmed by gambling. Football is doing nothing to prevent it or to help people. Actually all football is doing is throwing thousands more back in. We bring together fellow people like us with lived experience to walk between clubs to say, no, enough is enough. We must kick gambling ads out of football because if we don't, we know how bad it can get. And there's, and there's one step further than that. And the, the charity that I represent, the one on my t-shirt, was set up by bereaved families who have lost children to gambling related suicide. And this relationship between gambling and football, and I say this honestly and bluntly, is killing people. And we need it to stop, we need it to change, and that's why we campaign as much as we do. As part of my role with Gambling With Lives, I, I go into football clubs and academies to educate like young players about gambling harms using my own experience. And it was just the other day actually, I was at one of these clubs and uh, we asked a group of young footballers, these were 15 year olds, how many gambling companies they could name. And one of them could name 17 different gambling companies. Bearing in mind, you're not supposed to gamble until you're 18. I just think that's a horrifying 
reality of what is happening to young minds that gambling companies have infected football so much that children are able to name 17. So throughout our campaigning, um, we don't just do the walks, we, we campaign to government to try and get them to end gambling, advertising and sponsorship, but we also campaign to football and to clubs and pleased to say that we now have 17 clubs that back our campaign. Um, the highest profile is probably Luton Town, but we have Drogheda United in Ireland, but also Tranmere Rovers, Forest Green Rovers, who have both supported our campaign in the last year and both the chairman are fantastic supporters of what we do because they, they see the harm in their community. They know what this is doing to their young fans and have said no. So if you are a fan of a club and you're watching this, I would say write to your club, tell them that you don't want this and get them to back the big step. If, if you've got a club that has a gambling company on it, don't buy it. You don't have to be a walk-in advert for gambling companies. I support Peterborough United. They don't have a gambling sponsor. If they did, I, I wouldn't buy the shirt. Um, so I would encourage everyone to do that. But also I would encourage, as I said, write to your club, tell them you don't want it because it's not just about gambling sponsors on shirts. Most clubs, only one in the Premier League doesn't have a gambling partner. So even if it's not on the shirts, gambling companies are advertising around our stadiums. No one's stopping anyone having a bet. If you want to gamble, it's fine. You do not need to be encouraged on shirts, in stadiums, every time you watch TV or go on social media. So if you're interested in walking between football clubs in the cold, wet, wearing a bright yellow hoodie, but for a good cause, uh, please do check out our website, which is the-bigstep.com or go on Twitter at the underscore big step where we announce all our events. We want as many people to join us as possible. We want a little yellow army. The more people that are outside football clubs making a bit of a scene with a banner saying, let's kick gambling ads out of football, the more chance of success we have. So we want to bring people with us. Please do get in touch if you want to join us on the big step. So the 2005 Gambling Act is, is the, currently the laws of gambling in this country. Um, it makes more references to telephone betting, as in ringing up to place a bet, than it does online gambling. So it's completely unfit. Me and you were victims of that, and millions of others are victims of this regulation, which is just exploited by gambling companies on a daily basis. And the reason we're having a review of these laws is because the amount of people that are being harmed by gambling in this country is currently being looked at by the government. Um, as I said, football sponsorship is just one of the issues, but there's so many other things that they're looking at, including reducing the stakes, affordability checks, making support and uh, treatment better for people in recovery. It needs gambling to be treated as a public health issue, which it isn't at the moment, but it needs to be for, for there to be real genuine change. Eventually governments and football will act when enough people say the same thing. So even if you just do an email to an MP saying let's kick gambling ads out of football, it's better than not doing it and it will really help our cause.